Good morning. For our scripture reading this morning, it's uh, Romans 12. Allow me to share this, and then we'll get right in. If you want to be notified of these videos, I can put you on a list. So if you could say notify me, whether you uh, put that in a comment or send a private message, I'd be glad to notify you. I, I've been doing it uh, Friday evenings. Good morning, Michael Tishnell, my good friend. Tell Sally I said hello, and then I continue to pray. Okay, so good morning, Matthew. Good to see you, buddy and brother. It's always good to hang out with the godly, brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, this morning is Romans 12. I'm excited about it because it's, it's a great chapter. And um, so I finished two books this week, just for your information. I finished Job, which we just got, got done talking about, Job 42. And if you need more information about Job, I, I have uh, 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 I, we put together an audio for that um, maybe last year. And I'm going to put that in the comments of uh, Job or the uh, uh, original post with that video. So if you need to get deeper into the book of Job and uh, understand a little more, um, I think that's a good resource. Um, Romans uh, it was another book I finished up this week. And um, so I highlighted some of my favorite chapters of Romans. I think we covered Romans 1. Uh, we covered Romans 5, 8. And I'm going to do 12. And uh, next week I'll be into 1 Corinthians. So uh, this will be our last Romans uh, just chapter. And if you haven't read that book lately, <laughs> as I tell everyone every week, I highly recommend you read these books because they're fantastic. Okay, so uh, Michael says, good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Uh, amen. I'll uh, pray for that your wife will be discharged on Friday. And uh, good morning, Matthew. Of course. So let's get, before we get into Romans 12, let's pray, and then we'll get right into it. Uh, Father in heaven, we praise you. We give you all the praise. We thank you so much, God, for what you do for us and what you've done for us already. Lord, we just uh, put our hands, uh, we put our lives in your hands because we know that there's no better place to be um, than in your hands because you look after us, you take care of us, you've saved us uh, from destruction, Lord, and um, we have uh, all eternity to spend with you. And we're uh, so grateful, Lord, for all that you do. And we thank you for this morning. Help us to learn open our eyes and uh, open our hearts that we might uh, learn something this morning and uh, be blessed by you and that we might bless others. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. Good morning, Jack. Good to see you. Uh, yeah, Matthew. Yeah, we talked about the end of the book of Job, which, you know, without the end, you know, a story wouldn't make much sense, would it? So uh, it was great to talk about that. So this morning, Romans 12. Um, and I'll recap maybe a little bit. I, we read Romans 8 last week. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to recap it. It's just the information between Romans 9, 10, and 11. I'm, I'm not even going to go there. Uh, Y'all read it. <laughs> That's what I have to say. We could go chapter by chapter, but I'm not going to bother summarizing. I just got done summarizing the book of Job, which was very difficult and completely impossible. So uh, I'm not going to try to do that with, uh, with Romans. Um, uh, good morning, Heidi. Great to see you here this morning. So uh, Romans 12, let's get right into it. Uh, chapter uh, uh, 12, verse 1. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. Verse 3 For by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you 
not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Instead, think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we have many parts in one body, and all the parts do not have the same function, in the same way, we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. According to the grace given to us, we have different gifts. If prophecy, use it according to the proportion of one's faith. If service, use it in service. If teaching, in teaching. If exhorting, in exhortation. Giving with generosity, leading with diligence, showing mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Detest evil. Cling to what is good. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lack diligence and zeal. Be fervent in the spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath because it is written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repair, says, repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in so doing, you will be heaping fiery coals on his head. Do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. Good morning, Gina. Welcome. My uh, latest friend, Gina Shilor. Glad you could be here with me this morning. So Romans 12, uh, it's a great chapter. And guys, to be honest, I read so much just in those 21 verses. I don't think I can possibly address each verse individually. It's just packed. Don't you love how the scriptures are just packed with information? In other words, you can read it again and again and again like we do. And always get something more from it. Good morning, Cheryl. Glad you could draw me from my second half of the doubleheader. Um, so Romans 12, I love the opening. And these first two verses are so key that I think about them often. Um, and, and we'll just separate them. For me, uh, you know, when I think of Romans 12, all I usually think about are these two verses. And the rest, um, in some ways, uh, sometimes gets forgotten to me because I highly regard these first two verses, although there's a lot greater stuff in this chapter. Um, so uh, let's review it. I urge you to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. Um, and he says this to begin, uh, therefore brothers and sisters, in view of the mercies of God. So in other words, uh, when we reflect on the mercies God has shown us, when we reflect on the fact that we have been saved from eternal damnation, that we've been saved from being punished as we ought, as we deserve, um, let's consider <laughs> um, the mercies of God, right? So I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. So you remember the old covenant is all about sacrificial giving. Um, and they, they gave of their, their wealth, the, 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 the first fruits. And they, you know, they gave their livestock. Um, but we are under a new covenant, of course. And it's not about works. It's about grace. It's about faith in God. Um, according to uh, the righteousness given to Abraham because he believed. And that's Genesis 15, 6. We, we spent a lot of time in Romans, if you've read with me, 
um, uh, Abraham's brought up more than a couple times about the faith given to him, about him counted as righteous because of his faith. So in other words, one of the, this new covenant, um, and I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. So for this uh, easy believism that um, some Christians are into today, in other words, there's no call to holiness in, in certain churches. There's no call to live in a certain way. And, um, you know, that is so far from what the uh, New Testament authors are writing here. Um, because we are called to be holy, to walk in a holy way. And this whole chapter, I think, is summarized in that way, to live a higher standard that God has called us to live, to be as Christ lived. We should live as Christ lived. Good morning, Ed Dudley. Glad you could join me for this. Uh, Cheryl, I just got so lost in tech. It was fine. Oh, thank you, Cheryl. Um, thank you for sharing. So, um, so he urges us to present our bodies. Guys, I can't talk about this enough. Um, this is the way to live. You might think that going to church every week might be a sacrifice. Uh, Paul is talking about your, your, you know, spending your life as a sacrifice to God. Um, and this is in line with um, uh, as a, everything you do, do as unto the Lord. It's the whole concept of living your life out for other people. This is dying to yourself, dying to your own needs. Jesus um, gave of himself in such a way, um, as you read the Gospels, he, he, yet when he was hungry, when he wanted rest, where they were going to a place of rest, he sees the, 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 uh, the masses, he sees the crowds, and he sees them as, as a as sheep without a shepherd. He has compassion for them, even when he wants to rest and he wants to get a bite to eat. I know when I want to get the bite to eat, there's nothing stopping me. I'm going to get my bite to eat. And I think I'm better than I used to be, but we, we allow our flesh to take control, to take over and to demand from us. Um, and it leads us into a very selfish way of living. And God's calling us to, to live beyond that, to give even when it's not a good time for us, even when we're hungry, even when we're tired, to give of ourselves and to give of what we have. He's saying, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Um, this is holy and pleasing to God. This is your true worship. So I really do believe that um, this is the way to worship God. This is the way we, we do that. Um, so, you know, we might... Um, have been led to believe that going to the church is worship and singing praise and hymns before God. However, uh, we see a very different way of worshiping here, according to the Apostle Paul. And this is about living out your faith. This is about um, um, being with those that need us, whether you, they just need you to listen to them or whether you need to help them in whatever way that you can. Um, and uh, I'll leave it at that. I, I hope um, you got something out of that. I know every time I'm, 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 I read this, I, I, you know, it causes me to reflect. Um, and then verse two, this is probably my favorite verse and the ones that one I remember most about this uh, chapter. Do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed. So he's calling us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the good, pleasing, and perfect will of God. So let's think about this. Um, uh, does transformation automatically happen? If you're converted to know Jesus, and uh, yeah, amen, Cheryl, our life is a witness. Yes, and it should be. How we endure, how we uh, conduct ourselves, um, the peace that we have, the joy that we have, and um, the service that God puts on our hearts for others should all be a witness to others. Thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that. That's, yeah, that's part, that's all part of uh, worshiping God and uh, allowing what God does through us be a witness to others in our lives. Um, so let's talk about do not be conformed to this age, but be transformed. So how do we be transformed? Does it happen automatically? We're converted, we give our lives to Christ, and then what? Do we just go about our business and, hey, we're a Christian, I got my fire insurance, you know, I'm saved from, from hell and um, I'm good. 
right? No. God wants us to grow up. God wants us to mature. God wants us to know him more. Consider the greatest commandment, which I love to go back to. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. So this is what these two verses are all about, frankly. When you love the Lord your God with everything you've got, you know you're going to do that in service to him. You serve others because you serve God. So it's not about serving others. Certainly others are served, but your heart is about serving Jesus. That is your reason. That is your purpose. When you consider all that you do, whether you're washing dishes, whether you're taking the trash out, whether you're doing your homework, whether you're, you know, helping your wife with something that's so tedious and you don't like it, um, you take it as um, uh, a, a service unto the Lord. And when you look at everything you do as service unto the Lord, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you know you're helping someone and that's where Jesus has you that day to help someone, you can just consider it joy because you're doing work for your Father in heaven. You're pleasing Jesus in whatever activity you're doing. In this way, guys, we should never be bored. Anytime we have, you know, someone to help, we're doing a service unto God. So, it's a win-win-win. Uh, God is pleased with this. Our friends, our neighbors, those that we deal with in, this, in our stores, wherever we're, we're, wherever we're out and about, they're served by our help. They're served when we listen, when we, when we pause to consider someone's situation. They are blessed, and we are blessed also that we have the opportunity to serve God in that way. This is the way to live, my friends. This is the way to live so that it doesn't matter what you're doing. Your life is filled with joy because Jesus has you everywhere, whether it's ministering to your grandkids or whether it's ministering to your grandparents. You are there serving them in whatever capacity Jesus has you. It's almost like a secret mission for Jesus is your, your, is your life. You become this vessel that's there to serve and to please. And Ultimately, you're pleasing God. So, but let, let's face it, though. Um, let's think about, um, yeah, what Cheryl says is, is where I want to get to. When we love God with our mind, we need, to, uh, we need to be renewed. Because before we come to Jesus, we're filled with a bunch of garbage, first of all, from our culture, from our wicked culture, and, um, and maybe from our parents. Some of us have uh, had uh, maybe better parents than others. But no parent is perfect, right? So we're all going to need to be reprogrammed. Um, so when we love God with our mind, we need to fill ourselves with truth. And that's exactly what Cheryl's saying. We read the Bible and renew our minds. That's how we fill ourselves with truth. So, guys, uh, I started the BibleTeam.com back in uh, 2008 um, because of what God did for me. He set me on fire. And if you want to see my testimony, I post it every week in these, these videos. I started posting it and find out how the Lord transformed me. But he gave me this conviction to read the Bible. Uh, and I've read it over and over and over again. And so I, I am in fully convinced that in order for us to grow, we need to engage in Bible reading daily to really build momentum, to really for it to take effect. And the more I've read the Bible, first of all, the more I believe it, the more I want to read it, the more I realize I need to read it. Um, when you read the Bible uh, uh, so much so that you, you start to understand it, and I'm telling you, things fall into place, guys, and it doesn't happen overnight. The joy doesn't happen overnight. All the, all the things we learn from Scripture, um, it, it, it takes time to build, and, and in that process, we develop a great faith. So their faith comes from learning about the truth, and of course, a part of it is experience it. So the three items in order for us to grow are reading the scriptures, being in prayer, that's worshiping in spirit and truth there, and also uh, being in fellowship. We have got to be in fellowship with people that love God more than us, because when we do that, uh, our, we're sharpened. You know, iron sharpens iron, and we're kept um, focused 
on what is good. So when you when you fellowship with someone that loves God more than you, they they build you up, they encourage you, and you you're encouraged by them because you know they have a faith that's attractive. I want to have a faith more like John. So I'm going to spend more time with John because man, that guy really loves God. And you, you kind of in a certain way, you don't want to let him down. You want to, you know, you want to learn. So, you know, people can become your spiritual father or mother and that's good if you you know uh are are in that way that you you need to learn from someone and uh we're, we're, we've all been there i've had my spiritual father who's gone on to be with the lord now but um uh but this is how we grow this is how we're transformed by spending time with other believers that um have different experiences they bring a fresh perspective into our lives and they teach us a little more about god from their own perspectives so um, Cheryl goes on to say, discipleship has been lost. Yes, it has been lost. That's why these fellowships are needed. Everything, uh, amen, everything you do. Thank you, Cheryl, I appreciate your words. Uh, thank you, Jack. Uh, thank you, for, uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate that, Jack. Yeah, my testimony, it's, it's special to me because it's me, but what God did in my life is nothing uh, short of amazing. Led me from a lukewarm existence into uh, you know this passion that I have, and it just continues to grow. So I learned this secret, guys, about keeping my passion and keeping myself sharp. And it's about being in the Word of God regularly. It's about being in fellowship regularly. And, and your prayer life blossoms from that regular reading, from the regular fellowship, because we, 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 we learn how to love our friends deeply, and then we're led to pray for them. And so everything... Um, just blossoms out of out of those elements. We remain in Christ in this way by reading and praying and, and being in fellowship. So that's why I love to have interaction and love guys to share with me um, when I when I read uh, these chapters. So uh, this way we may discern what is good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's about getting a closeness, a oneness with God. It really is when you consider. Uh, Enoch walked closely with God. Uh, Noah walked closely with God. They had close fellowship. Jesus didn't say anything that the Father didn't tell him to say, and he didn't do anything that the Father didn't tell him to do. So we have this intimacy in Jesus' walk with his Father, and that's modeled for us and for us to emulate. We are to be like Christ, and Paul lived a, 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 a nothing, nothing short of a remarkable life. And Paul says to imitate me. He had this relationship with Christ that was so intimate, and it gave him a bigger picture, a, a better perspective on everything. And it helped to en endure the adversity that he endured. So in this way, we are being transformed, renewing our minds through our experiences and the things we learn. So thank you. So I want to share what uh, Matthew has to say. Uh, about 20 years ago, a priest gave a homily, and he said, we must live our faith not just when we are at Mass, but throughout. He used the example of when we are home and receive salesman's calls. He said, uh, be nice to those folks. So I started asking them, can I ask you a question? They love that because they think they're going deeper with them. So I asked them, do you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Amen. I will pray for you. Well, one day the salesman, saleswoman called back and said, did you mean what you said? I said, yes. Do you need prayer? She said, yes. I have been living in my car for a month and I am at the end of my rope. So point is you never know when your kindness or mercy towards someone can be a huge blessing to someone, thus serving God well. So bless someone that calls on the phone. They may need you or more important, God. Amen, Matthew. That is a wonderful testimony. Uh, that's a great way, a great perspective. We never know where someone's at. We never know when they need a smile. We never know when they need Jesus, right? I mean, you know, everyone's at a different place, and God has us as his agents, as his ambassadors. We are spokespeople for him, and guys, the suicide rate is so alarming. I did a, 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 a short uh, message um, on suicide a few months back, and guys, um, uh, it's, it's, it's startling to know how many people, especially young, um, are taking their lives. 
And guys, you have no idea when you bless someone with a smile or a blessing or or uh, engage them as Matthew has done um, uh, about Jesus. They, you never know when they might need it. And so, guys, be about the Father's business. Um, be that ambassador for him. And, and so uh, what's difficult for me always is I, I, you know, I've compartmentalized much in my life where you know, when I'm in the Word, I'm in the Word, and when I'm out and about, I'm not really always thinking about the Word. But when you read the Word, and you meditate on that, and you have these Christian, you know, relationships with the people, it, it, it reminds you what we're, what we're here for, what we're here on earth for. So in that way, um, we, we can be reminded that we need to be about uh, God's business and not just about our own. So don't be in a hurry, right? It's not good to always be rushing around. Make sure that, you know, you get on time and you can have, you can be in the present. We need to really be in the present. Um, when people are talking to us in the store and you're listening to them, um, uh, they, people need to be listened to. And like, uh, like Matthew, Matthew listened to someone and, 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 and showed uh, love. He loved that person. And so much so that it made this uh, effect on them. What a blessing. That's a, just a great story. So uh, let's move on. We shared a lot about two verses. Um, and so. Uh, I love verse three, for by the grace given to me, I tell everyone among you not to think of himself more highly than he should think. Boy, this is a great uh, verse in, in, in an age where we get uh, medals because of participation. Um, you know, we're, we're led in many ways by our society to think more than we should, to think more of ourselves. Um, uh, society has a way of making you feel good about yourself and, and, and think that uh, you're not so bad. And the, the Bible has a way of telling you that <laughs> you are really bad. Um, you know, our sinful desires are, are uh, uh, incalculable, I feel. And there's many verses to, to, to illustrate that. Romans, uh, Romans 1, 2, and 3, I think, really shows the human condition, that there's really nothing good in us. And any good that is in us is from Jesus. Um, and when we, when you know, Jesus pretty much says, well, he does say, um, apart from me, you can do nothing. Um, so that's where reading the Bible uh, counters uh, our current culture and helps us realize our sinful condition and um, that how much we need God. And here's Paul saying, you not, uh, uh, he tells us not to think of uh, ourselves more highly than we should think. Instead, he says, think sensibly, as God has distributed a measure of faith to each one. Now, as we have many parts in one body, all and all the parts do not have the same function in the same way we who are many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. We are members of one another. We are part of the same body. Remember when, uh, uh, when Paul was uh, struck uh, on the way to Damascus, and uh, uh, he says, who are you? Jesus says, I am Jesus. And he says, why are you persecuting me? And so we know that Paul wasn't persecuting Jesus personally. Jesus was, was no longer on the earth, right? He was, he was resurrected. He, was, he ascended already. And so Jesus is saying, why are you persecuting me? And, and, and Jesus makes it clear that we are part of him. We are part of his body. He is our head, and we are his uh, parts. So, um, and uh, so we are one. So we need to take this seriously because I'm going to have eternal relationships with Jack, with Matthew, with Cheryl, and uh, those of you that are in Christ. Um, so we're going to have all eternity to spend time with each other. And so we're part of each other, and that's a remarkable thing to think about. So it says. Uh, uh, we all have different uh, functions. I don't know if I need to go into that or, you know, we all have our different uh, uh, ministries that God's given us, things that we put in our hearts that we do. I think it's important to know um, uh, primarily uh, to, to begin the, the, the disciplines we've already discussed, the reading the word of God, praying, and fellowship. Out of those three disciplines, um, you know, 
Jesus will teach us. He will lead us. The Holy Spirit will lead us into what ministries that we are to do. Um, you know, ministry begins in the home. Uh, it begins with loving those that God put immediately. And out of that, if we're found faithful in our small ministries, he will give us more. And that is something you need to work out with God yourself, or maybe um, a spiritual leader that you know might help you understand your giftings and how you can uh, grow to know uh, God and, and, and be in service. Because we all want to participate. Really, when we love Jesus, we all want to share in this grand plan. And he wants us to participate. Um, so, so walk in that way. Do be diligent in the three disciplines that I've shared, reading, sharing, and, and uh, reading and praying and, 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 and fellowship. And he will, uh, he will grow you into being a disciple on purpose, that you're going to look for ways to share and how God can use you. And he certainly will use you uh, by default, just by living your life, he'll use you, like we talked about already, the, the true worship that we discussed. Um, so, so he says, if prophecy use it according to proportion, I'm not a sensationist. I believe we still have gifts of prophecy. We still have gifts of tongues. Um, I've seen that personally in my life. So um, uh, there are those that believe that the, the, the gifts are no longer uh, part of our uh, 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 church today, but I totally disagree wholeheartedly. Um, let's continue. Uh, verse 9, let love be without hypocrisy, detest evil, cling to what is good. I'm telling you, when I, when I read detest evil, I'm going to share that um, I, I automatically think about our, our culture of death. So much in our culture is about death, um, and it's getting into the paranormal, the spiritual, but it's all out of the context of scripture. It's like, like there's no truth in there. So there's a vacuum. But we see all kinds of gore and uh, torture and stuff on TV and in the movies. It's, it's so dark today. I remember as a kid and, you know, decades before, um, maybe there was like on occasion there'd be a gore or a horror movie. You know, it was like kind of, you know, one out of every 10 movies. And now it seems like six out of 10 movies is, uh, is, is dark, you know, like, you know, serial killers and that kind of stuff. It's just, uh, so this is saying detest evil. Guys, if, if you have a healthy dose of, uh, of crime shows where you see death a lot, if you have a healthy uh, uh, exposure to horror movies, I, let, me, let me encourage you to refrain from watching vile stuff on TV. And I know when you're in it, um, it's hard to see uh, just how dark it is. But when you fill yourself with the truth of God and all things good, um, I, I'll just say, I'll say one thing real quick, uh, just a real quick testimony. Um, and this is a real credit to my wife, Beth. We, at the time, we watched um, Law and Order, uh, like a couple different uh, versions of that show, Law and Order. And they start out with a death. There's a murder in every episode, right? And so, um, and then we watched um, a CI, a CSI, the crime scene investigators. And then we watched a little bit of NCIS. So throughout our week, we might have been, um, you know, three or four hours of, of that type of show throughout the week. And I'm telling you, when that stuff fills your mind, um, you start to uh, imagine things that, you, we ought to imagine. We start to have fears that we might never had before. It starts to work in this, your subconscious, and you think about death much more often than, than you ought. So, and guys, death is not good. Death is not something God wants to praise. Death is not something God wants us to fixate on. We are not to be thinking about that stuff. Um, so, all I'm saying is, um, we stopped. My wife had the conscience um, and uh, the conviction to say, Larry, I think we should stop watching all these shows. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll do that. We won't watch them. So I, I agreed with her. And she, in that way, was the spiritual leader, um, at least at that time. And so we stopped watching those shows. And so it was years later. I found myself watching what I uh, thought was my favorite uh, movie. 
uh, Goodfellas was uh, at the time I, I would have told you Goodfellas and it, Goodfellas is a great movie. There's just so much blood and foul language in it. You know, I wouldn't recommend it today, but the story is phenomenal. Um, the story of Henry Hill and the mafia. Uh, so uh, when I watched that after being uh, desensitized, so to speak, um, from the Law and Order shows, uh, it 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 was too much for me. I started watching Goodfellas, and I'm like, it it started to make me uh, like say, I I I don't want to watch this because the blood was. So it's weird um, how <clears throat> when we're used to a certain way of living, um, you know what we used to in, endure or watch or put before us becomes um, vile, and so. Um, anyone that's been into horror and gore and they then spend time in the word of God on a regular basis, I, I'm, I'm convinced that they will, they will be led away, that the spirit will lead them away from that because that stuff's addicting. Just the action and the, uh, the, the shock of it is addicting. And so the Lord can lead uh, one away from that um, by, by truly serving him. And so uh, I truly believe he wants that for all of us. So let's keep on going. We're, we're drawing this way uh, far out. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. I love this verse, verse 10. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. We cannot do this without fellowship. It goes back to what I was saying. Love one another deeply as brothers and sisters. How do we do that? We spend time with those brothers and sisters. We learn um, about their lives. We learn about those, their loved ones. We learn about their concerns. We learn about all their worries, sharing burdens with one another. Uh, Galatians 6 talks about sharing burdens with one another, and we should be sharing our burdens. Um, this is how we love each other deeply, but we can't do it without spending much time with each other. So I encourage you, if you're not in a small group, pray to the Lord to put you in a small group, even if it's one-on-one. -on -one. Um, uh, the Lord will put you in fellowship with someone else that loves God and that you can spend time with. Um, outdo one another in showing honor. And, and it, it really, when it comes back, all these, um, you can summarize most of them by the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them to unto you. It's Christ's golden rule. I believe that's in uh, Matthew 7. It's, in, it's on a, service, a Sermon on the Mount. It's between Matthew 5 and Matthew 7. So much of this is about that. Um, be patient in affliction. Be persistent in prayer. And that's, uh, you know, there's, what is it? I think it's uh, Ephesians uh, or maybe it's Thessalonians where, where it says pray without ceasing. Here's another one. Be persistent in prayer. Um, Share with the saints in their needs. Pursue hospitality. It's about being a responsible friend, a responsible brother or sister to those in your lives so that you might share with others that might need. Um, rejoice. I love verse 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. And um, that's key. My friend, when you see someone weeping, um, try not to make light in any way. I mean, uh, just consider uh, their, their sadness and maybe spend time with them. And, and you don't have to say anything. You don't have to try to fix it. Please, don't try to fix their situation. Just listen. and Because we have no idea what they really need. And maybe after only listening to their needs and why they're sad, then maybe the Holy Spirit will give you the things to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you how to act accordingly. That's why we need to be in communication with the Father at all times. Because when you see someone that's sad, you don't know if their dog died, or whether their, their parent died, or is you know bad situation. So all I'm saying is, don't make any assumptions, um, and just just be there. And just that, uh, the, just the presence of being with someone that's sad can go a long way. Uh, just just that presence, um, and just uh, go in it with an open mind and say, Lord, help me to, to minister to this person. Live in harmony with one another. Boy, do we not need this verse today. Live in harmony with one another. In a, in a, in a day, an age when um, we are uh, looking at our culture, and it's just our culture is falling apart, 
and we're losing our civility. And I really think our nation is uh, losing its way because we've lost our uh, foundation of uh, the truth of the Word of God. And, um, and uh, we, we, we lack civility. We lack um, uh, 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 love in our culture. So live in harmony. And it's all about living. Harmony is about not being right. When, when you know someone's wrong, you don't always have to make it right. You don't have to uh, call them out on it. You don't have to correct them. Um, living in harmony is about um, uh, not being antagonistic. Um, don't be argumentative. Uh, just, just love, right? So in other words, in many times, just shut up. Just stop talking. And, uh, and you can be in harmony. And just love people for who they are. And make, make, make the situation about them and not about yourself. Um, live in harmony. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own estimation. Again, it's thinking less of yourself. Um, you, we often, you know, especially I went through a great period of self-righteousness when I read through the Bible. So my knowledge of scripture was going beyond my own experience. In other words, um, I was reading so much and I would look down on others because they weren't reading. And, um, you know, who am I to judge another servant? Uh, Romans 14 uh, it, it goes into a lot of good uh, issues about these things. But nevertheless, um, uh, we, we, we really do need to be humbled in our own way. And God has a way of doing it. And it's always, I'm telling you, it's always a good thing to be humbled. Uh, don't be afraid to pray for humility. And then you'll find yourself being humbled one day um, for whatever reason. And you'll be thanking the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for helping me remain humble. When you live in that way, it's a blessing. It's good because um, I tell you, it's good not to become, uh, you know, to think more of yourself than you should. And it's good to uh, just walk in that way because we can receive from the Spirit uh, the more we walk in, in a way of humility in our lives. So I encourage you to just, just go that way. Uh, do not repay evil for evil. Give careful, ther careful thought to what is honorable in everyone's eyes. So really live with intention. Live in a way that's deliberately uh, in a way to bless other people. Um, if possible, I love this verse. Verse 18, if possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. <laughs> that's huge. Live at peace with everyone. Um, uh, impossible at times. But nevertheless, we're commanded, if possible, as far as it depends, live at peace with everyone. Um, friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath. And that's so uh, good to um, not go after vengeance. Um, don't seek revenge. Don't have hold revenge in your heart. Take all those uh, bad ideas, thoughts of vengeance to the Lord and say, Lord, help me uh, just get beyond this right so that you might forget about um something that's happened to you um and the next verses i think are taken from uh proverbs 25 if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty uh give him something to drink for in doing so in so doing you will be heaping fiery coals on his head so that's proverbs 25 verses 21 and 22 um and of course, you know, Paul's calling on the wisdom of Solomon here in this case. I love how Paul uh, is able to write these letters and just recall uh, all the scriptures that he knew of that were applicable. And all throughout Romans, he uh, uh, calls on, you know, these uh, Old Testament scriptures, of course. But in, in Paul's day, they were the scriptures that they had. And I'm convinced the Old Testament scriptures are just as applicable uh, in our lives today as, as, as they were for the New Testament authors then, um, because we learned just as much. Um, so guys, uh, that about sums it up for Romans 12. I hope I did it justice. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free, but I think we covered everything. Uh, verse 21 will end with, do not be conquered by evil, but conquer evil with good. So, um, when we love others in our lives when we uh, love God in the way we ought. Um, 
considering the greatest commandment, loving others is um, we want to be loved and loving God with everything we have, then we, we do conquer evil. We break people down. People want to uh, be at war with other people. People want to hate people because they're, uh, they're steeped in wickedness. And that's just how they've uh, been living their lives. But when we love on those people that want to uh, live in that way, it wears them down and it encourages them. And so um, when we have any of those kind of uh, relationships um, that we we're, are dealing with people that are not very loving in return and they just want to argue and they just want to uh, kind of control you, um, just be, even though you don't recognize it, your love for them and the things you do um, are, are, are uh, you don't always recognize it, in other words. So keep on loving, keep doing what is right, and don't expect anything in return. Um, as long as the Lord has you in their, um, in their, in, in their um, life, um, be doing about what, what God would call you to do. Good morning, Dale. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, glad you could join us this morning, brother. Uh, so guys, uh, I hope that uh, uh, wraps up Romans 12. Matthew says, we cannot ask God for forgiveness when we see him unless we forgive everyone. Amen. Uh, consider that. Um, that's very wise words. Uh, and, and it echoes what, what Jesus says, we must forgive others so that we'll, we'll be forgiven. So uh, this plays a part in, uh, in, in walking with humility. When we, when we walk in humility, we have a soft heart. And it's so key. Uh, there's a really great proverb that says, always guard, guard your heart at all costs. So when we have a soft heart, it leads us to a quick forgiveness. In other words, it doesn't give the enemy a chance to let our heart, uh, let our heart harden. So you know what happens is when a wrong is done to us, we want to hold on to that hurt. And the longer we do without forgiving that party, the harder our heart becomes. And over time, it just gets worse. So the adage, time heals all things, all things is not true. But if you walk in humility with a soft heart, time can heal those wounds. But if you fail to walk in humility with a soft heart, your heart will only grow harder. And so time doesn't heal anything. I've known people in relationships that have estranged relationships with a spouse or with a, with a sibling, and uh, time didn't do anything because it, it, it just you know, got worse. So all I'm saying is it's key. It's important to remain uh, uh, soft. Remain, you know, your heart needs to be soft. Walk in humility. And then you'll be, it's easier to forgive in that way. So I appreciate that. Hi, Dale. Uh, so guys, that's about it. I'm going to wrap it up for now. Thank you for uh, uh, joining me this morning. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray us out and we'll see you next uh, Saturday. We'll probably share from uh, a Psalm maybe or uh, First Corinthians. And that's where I'm at in my reading. So Father in heaven, we praise you and we thank you so much for this day. Thank you for uh, these words that Paul wrote down so long ago that we might enjoy them and learn from them today. Lord, help us to walk in your ways. Help us to read diligently. Help us to be in prayer uh, because it's so easily to forget you <laughs> as is the way we humans are um, about our daily life. But the more we fill our minds with you, the more we'll be remembering you. And Lord, be with us and help us to find fellowship groups if we're not already in them so that we might have intimacy with other people and in this way, learning how to deeply love them as we're called to do. Lord, help us to do these things that you've uh, commanded us to do, that we might be conformed to your likeness and be renewed of our minds, as Romans uh, 12, 2 states. Lord, help us to be uh, transformed into your likeness. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone for uh, hanging out with me, watching and participating. I love you all. Have a great week and I'll see you next Saturday.